meeting to order. Um, tonight's meeting, our uh, purpose was or is to appoint a new board member from Brookfield and to um, also have make some policy have some policy discussions and um, some decisions. So um, we do have a candidate for the the board who is um, at a required training, and I had told him we we would be able to. Um, interview him around 6.15, so um, I'm trying to honor his time commitment, and so what, I'm, what I may do is have us take some public comment, and then at 6.15, we may move on, and then um, if folks feel like they need more time to speak, then we'll continue after that uh, time period. Um, also, if folks are interested um, in the flag policy discussion, um, we will open up public comment for after um, the board has some discussion on that. So, um, so that if, if you want to hold off on comments, regarding the flag policy just for the um, in order to um, allow the meeting to move um, forward as it needs to. So in public comment we allow speakers three minutes. Um, we tonight uh, again because we're on a little bit of a time crunch I'm not sure there's a large group here um, so I don't know if you have, if there are certain people who are sort of going to be the spokesperson for your group. The other thing is, is if, if um, you're all speaking to the same issue, um, if, we've, if, we, if you don't have anything new to add, um, if we can just sort of keep uh, our comments uh, fairly brief and and just adding new additional information that would be helpful uh, and again we have a fair amount of work that the board needs to do tonight we do want to hear um, from the community but we also um, need to take care of our business um, and we also we can't respond so um, other than letting folks know our complaint procedure, um, which is on our website, if you haven't seen it already. Um, so we did not create a speakers list, so I've got to figure out how we're going to have the first person speak. I guess... Um, you want to raise your hand and be the first person? Let's let's see who is interested in sharing their comments. Those online can raise their hands. Those online can also raise their hands. I'll prompt you if I see any. Okay. Okay. Please state your name and where you're from. Please. John Helfant. Uh, I'm on the West Brookfield East Roxbury line. I have. Uh, Parent of three students at RUHS and RTCC. I'll save my flag policy comments for later as you requested. Uh, I want to talk about politics. So I heard Superintendent Millington about three months ago say to this board that he was hoping to have politics out of the school and to just educate students, and yet I see politics all throughout the school today. What's worse is that leftist ideology politics is permitted and conservative ideology is punished. Uh, the BLM flag is a good beginning for this commentary. The flag has been permitted to fly for two years. Yet students with don't tread on me, Trump 2020, only two genders, um, a hat with a gun, uh, and other conservative political ideology were made to turn their shirts inside out, not return with them, take their ball caps off, or tape up the emblem. Etc. Let's go, Brandon, a populist phrase which disparages the President of the United States. 
as a rallying cry against COVID policies and lockdown practices. It was chanted at basketball game. Those students were made to attend a restorative justice meeting prior to being allowed back at games. No actual foul words were spoken, but their populist outcry was admonished. A TED Talk video was provided to ninth graders about sexual violence. A good topic, you would think, is sexual violence is unacceptable. The video's host only spoke of U.S. Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, President Donald Trump, and white men. In my profession, the last time I checked, black men, Hispanic men, Asian men, Pacific Islander men, all races and creeds of men, and in fact women, have engaged in sexual violence. Yet only white men were talked about in the video. Most recently, the Chick-fil-A fundraiser. The Chick-fil-A uh, owners have made no excuses for their strong Christian beliefs. They believe in heterosexual marriage. They are pro-life. Might this run counter to pro-trans or pro-homosexual cult culture? Indeed it does. But that does not mean that they uh, bash or demean people in those communities. It means that this is America. <coughs> and if you don't like Chick-fil-A's religious or political <coughs> beliefs, then don't buy their product. That's how America works. The free market dictates what succeeds and what fails. It is not for the OSSD to pick winners and losers. That is a form of discrimination by a government entity. The fundraiser should have been allowed to continue if the community did not support the fundraiser and it flopped, or if the community supported the fundraiser, then the students would have uh, received a good education on how the free market works. What they were taught, though, is that a few loud voices and a superintendent's single voice rules over them. You taught them the un-American doctrines of totalitarianism, where a few outweigh the many. These are all examples of leftism and subtle critical race theory in our OSSD school district. This type of teaching is not okay. No race of Americans should be targeted or demonized. The OSSD should not be picking political winners and losers. Um, Okay, that's about time. We're, we gave you a little bit of extra there. Okay. Thank you very much. If I could add to that, my name is Chris Hurley. I live in Braintree. The sergeants are here with us this evening. They raised their son locally here. He was a baseball star. He was an athlete. He went through this system, graduated, went on to become a franchisee owner at Chick-fil-A. Now, we just canceled Chad Sargent, one of our own. Cancel culture is now in our school. I would like the board, and the administration didn't give us one last night as far as I'm concerned, a good reason why now Chad Sargent is on our canceled list. This is the kind of person I want my son to become. I want him to get through the school system, I want him to graduate, go on to school, become a successful businessman, business owner, just successful, period. I've had a hard time trying to describe to him this week what has happened with this team and why now Chad Sargent is the enemy of our school system and now our public community. We have two businesses here, one on the right, one on the left. This business is big. It has tax documentation that shows who they donate to and donate to Republican candidates and conservative ideology. Over here, we have another business. They are big. They have tax documentation also that shows that they donate to liberal ideologies and Democrat candidates. You put the flagpole of one in the front yard and you canceled and banned the other one completely. How is that not a double standard? How do we explain that to kids? Thirdly, before this is over with, the test scores here are disgusting. What we learned last night, and I didn't know this, here's a failure on my part for being a parent. You have disasters in the bathrooms, drugs, no doors. How are these kids using the bathrooms? The sex that I've heard that's going on here. What, what was said last night? Five or six different people have applied for school choice now. Kids are going home telling their parents they don't want to go to school here. And now cancel culture is here. You have, according to last year's numbers, 36% have taken at least one AP exam. 15% have passed. Mathematics proficiency is at 21%. Reading proficiency is 48%. Are you kidding me? Where do you guys find the time 
to install the woke ideology when our scores are going down the tubes. We're putting our kids here to go to school to learn something. It isn't a social club all day long. Everybody's offended. I'm offended now. Nobody cares. That's fine. I can handle it. Where are we going to go from here? That's my question. What are you folks going to do about these scores? We're well beyond the fundraiser at this point because it's obvious we've got bigger problems. Please, for the love of our children, will we put them at the top of the list and think about them first? I'm sorry to get loud. I'm a little upset. This is my son. We all have children here. There's more out in the community that are upset. They can't make it here tonight. Hopefully they're online. Somebody needs to speak up for the kids. I'm done. Thank you. I'm Wayne Townsend, and I'm a parent with a child here in Randolph in school. And I was a little bit disturbed when I learned of the shutting down these children on the baseball team from having a fundraiser to get equipment that will better perform their game and their dreams. And because of woke ideology that we're pushing onto our children because somebody disagreed with a brand of a company that they wanted to use as a fundraiser, is uh, when are we gonna start putting our children first and let them live their dreams and stop pushing all this onto our kids all the time? It's getting to the point where it's a little bit ridiculous. There's a lot of brands that I disagree with, but I'm not gonna try to shut down children from their dreams and raising the money that they need for the equipment that they need and to be able to go to an event that they would like to go to. It's just, we need to stop pushing this on our kids and let our kids be kids. We as parents, we do the best that we can teaching our children what we believe is right, but we don't want our kids going to school and being pushed all this ideology nonstop. It's getting to the point where it's a little bit ridiculous. Um, we are at 6.15 almost and we have a candidate who is uh, willing to take time out of a required training so we've heard from folks we hear what you're saying um, and I think we are going to move forward at this there'll point be time for more public comment later? Yes. there'll be time for uh, on this can issue I just in very briefly my name is John Clark I almost ran out of gas I got here late uh, can you hold on just one second? Oh, well, why do you have an opportunity to speak? Because I know because I got. So, well, I if, can I just now. have a raise of hands of people who still want to speak with new information or a different point of view on this issue? Okay, so we have two people and we have a couple <laughs> online. So what, what I'm going to try and do out of respect for um, our candidate is I'm going to move into that part of the discussion because he's taking time out of a training that's required. Well, we all took time out of things to come here and train as well. Exactly. The, okay, the let board me check chair in with has Scott, control then. of the meeting. I need to make that let me, very Let me clear. see if Scott so would please be Please let willing. her do her job. To call back like please let her do her job, sir. Thank you. Scott, would you be, would it, as you can tell, <laughs> this was not something that I could foresee, so I apologize for that. Um, when will you be, how, is there a way that we can uh, contact you to let you know when we're ready for the interview? Same with um, you, Devin. It, it's fine. Uh, I have no problem doing this uh, at a later time. And I know Mr. Millington does have my contact info and some of your board is, does as well. If you want to try to shoot me a message and we can try to arrange that different time, that's not a problem. So it will probably be a little bit later tonight, but um, in order to have a little bit more time to hear folks, um, we'll, we'll get back to you. No. And I, because I don't want to, I don't want, I realize that you're popping out of a training and I don't want you to miss it. No, please. Th this is important and I have no problem taking that back seat. And, okay. And Scott, I'll, I'll email you. Um, 
Internet, not internet. Cell phone connection isn't the greatest here, so I apologize for that. Okay, no worries. Yeah. And Devin, you're all you're okay just waiting? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so um Oh, okay. Uh Darnton. So there's Vicky, Tevin. Okay. Uh <clears throat> So, uh, does anybody, did anybody see who was yeah, first we here? John Clare. Well, we yeah, had John John spoke up, so um, again, can you just tell us your name and where you're from, please? It's John Clark, K-L-A-R, oh. Brookfield. Clark. Um, and I don't, I don't want to take a long time. I've written about the subject, and I've been writing about a long time, but I'm an attorney. I don't know how many attorneys are in the room, but if there are any, I'd like them to tell me why this is an impartial government body when you are, as Mr. Hurley has indicated, embracing one political ideology, whatever you might want to call it as a platitude, it's very visibly a political ideology for one party in this country. And now that's the issue. Because now that we're talking about chicken, if we're gonna look at the past sins of a corporation to kids who did not politicize this event, it's now been politicized by others, because somebody spoke up. And now we have a lot of people speaking up, because these voices have not been heard about an ideology that does not belong at the school flagpole. MAGA is a sentiment. It's not a political organization. If we put MAGA flags up, would anyone complain? Would that be inclusive or divisive? Now, Mr. Millington, I, I believe I have the name correct, has violated the law. You violated the First Amendment. Saying, oh, I have the power under these regulations does not absolve you of compliance with U.S. federal law. And you have a problem with that. You're gonna have a problem going forward. And so now I think the real question is how you continue to maintain that flag. I really think that the superintendent has a duty to remove an overtly partisan ideological flag. I know there are two sides, but that's why a school has no business favoring one. Fundamental First Amendment law does not get obviated by school regulations giving someone carte blanche power to decide whose chicken they like. As far as I understand, the kids chose this because there isn't one in Vermont. I've never had this stuff. But furthermore, this also raises the issue of socio-emotional learning and conditioning children for race and gender based on theories. I don't see the academic credentials in this gentleman or this school body to be making these kinds of decisions for children's uh, emotional conditioning. There are a lot of experts out there in psychoanalysis who are saying this could be very damaging for children, so before you experiment on them, I think the point has been made about math and reading. I think we were told that was gonna be done with these kids. And now under COVID, I don't even know that testing is being maintained. So it's like, oh look, now we can help them stop being white supremacists. It's highly offensive. And that's another whole matter. And so maybe that should be discussed with the children too, both sides of that issue. Thomas Sowell would be a great resource. If you haven't read Disparities and Discrimination before attributing every disparity to white supremacy, maybe you should read his book. He's a magna cum laude graduate of, of uh, Harvard University and an economist, not Kendi. Uh, Ibram Kendi, who has no credentials. So ultimately, this board will be responsible. This is an ongoing issue. And the answer is for government entities legally to exclude both sides and not to engage in, in the emotional reprogramming of the subconscious of children. If you haven't you know, heard of um, Brave New World or you know, any of these things, how about a Clockwork Orange? Fundamentally bad idea when government tries to recondition people especially with anti-racism that is hateful, agitating, and angry. And you see the evidence here, and then we're told we're all racist because we like Martin Luther King. And you cannot have equity and inequality in the same room, okay? They don't coexist. This is my background, I'm done, thank you. I studied social justice for 30 years as a lawyer. And I ask you to look at what you're doing. It's unconstitutional, for the record. Take the flag down, take the flag down. Okay. Uh, uh, we have folks in front of you. Uh, so, Tev. Um, uh, my name is Tev Kelman. I teach English and social studies at the high school. Um, I'm also the vice president of the union. And I wanted to abide by your original direction to save comments on the sort of issues surrounding the flag for a later date. So I certainly have things to say to that effect, but I'm gonna save them. I just wanna um, simply kind of convey um, a message really that Nora had hoped to convey, um, which is 
it's getting to that time of year where there's certain positions which are grant funded and which in in past in, at least in the past couple of years it seems like because of the nature of the directives that have been given to lane um kind of necessitate riffing positions which are extremely likely to be refunded and so we just wanted to flag that as wondering if there if there is a way to re-examine that language to do a way that we could have that stability of folks who you know i think there's mutual interest in wanting everyone to have a predictable transition at the end of the year and you know have those folks come back and i realize there's a lot of Details. So I just wanted to, I know that's not the issue that most people are here tonight, but I just wanted to get that on the record um, while I had the chance. And again, I'm hoping that I'll have a chance to speak to some of the other stuff later, but I'm going to hold off unless you tell me that that was my only shot. Okay. Uh, Emily? Hi. Um, my name is Emily Baker. I from RUHS in 2021 and in Brookfield, Vermont, but I'm currently going to Northern Vermont University as a childhood education major, hoping to pursue an education as a future educator. And I'm here to state my thoughts on the ad policy and just share my view as a student coming from this school, education from Randolph and my opinions on that but I'm in the same boat as Mr. Kelman and I will hold my comments on the flag policies until a later date. Okay. Uh, and then you were I just because I, I just want to make a quick comment really on that one of the things that Chick-fil-A stands out in my mind is associating with is the number of times that they were shown on the news being the ones that were there with the doors wide open, taking care of the hurricane victims, taking care of the tornado victims, and being a general big help to the community. So I just would like to raise that as a... Can you just state your name? Martha. Your town, Martha? Randolph. Randolph. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi there. Um, Kathleen Mason. Um, so I'm here today because this isn't about Chick-fil-A. There has been a long-standing underlying rumbling of homophobia and transphobia running through our community for a long while. And this past week, the Chick-fil-A fundraiser emboldened parents, community members, and children to outwardly express hatred, disdain, and just terrible things for anyone who either is gay or trans or aligns themselves with a gay or trans community. And so I believe that the members of this board, our superintendent, our administrators, our educators, our coaches, our volunteers, our children want and intend to create a just, safe and inclusive learning environment but unfortunately, we are at a time where that is not fundamentally true. We must have quick and thoughtful responses to challenging issues that come up in our community. Because when issues arise in the community, it's not just about the adults' responses. <clears throat> it is the message the adults send to our children. And here is a little bit of what's happened in this past week alone. Two children wait on top of the stairs to pour water on the head of a child because she wore pride, a pride shirt. Oh, you're one of them, they said. That Chick-fil-A's fault? She has the floor. I have the floor, you need sir. to keep Be your quiet. comments quiet for now. Oh, he does speak. <laughs> After the Chick-fil-A fundraiser was canceled, a student athlete leader wore a homemade shirt saying, I heart Chick-fil-A, walking past other children and children with have, that have two moms. The message was the Chick-fil-A fundraiser was canceled because it was not inclusive of all identities. And that response of a child who is considered 
an, a leader in the community wore a homemade shirt expressing that disdain. Is that what we want to show our children that that's what a student leader does? On Facebook forum today, a parent expressing dismay because two children yelling to another child, hey, you dirty N-word. That is the vitriolic hatred that has been rumbling through our community. It is not politics, it is bias, it is discrimination, and it is not okay. And what I'm asking for from this board is we establish systems, frameworks, and education for all school associated coaches, volunteers, educators, administrators that provide them with guidelines to ask questions like, what is the goal of this committee? Is it to raise money for all our children? Can they talk now? Okay. Will, oh, sorry. time. Sorry, okay. time's up. I asked for a framework in education for all of our people in our community so we can do better. Because once we know better, we do better. Do we have, how are we doing on the online? Uh, two. Two. Okay, we'll move to the online folks. Uh, Pushy. Yes, hello. I'm a student at RUHS. My name is Stormy Trombley. Um, I'll keep my ideas on the flag for later. But first off, on the, I would like to talk on the first comment that was made in this meeting. So, saying that you are pushing liberal ideology is interesting to me because you you listed one of the liberal ideologies that you can't perform in a school setting is you can't wear a shirt that says there's two genders well that's simply just social science there are not two genders and that's proven i think you need to look back on what made you say that and educate yourself because liberal ideology is not just something that makes you uncomfortable it is something that is it is something that can be proven and it's more than just chick-fil-a you did not have to follow through with a fundraiser from a controversial food chain in the first place. You could have found someone so much more credible and someone who could have brought good views to whatever you think that is. I, I okay, I'm done. Can I say something? Can I just have for a second? I um, just want to state your name. Grace Kalfan, I go to RU, I'm at RTCC, I'm a student there. Um, for the Chick-fil-A thing, if you don't want to support it, don't support it. You don't have to buy it. That's like you don't like a brand or something, you don't buy it. Let the kids do their thing. They're trying to raise money for their school. They let them do their thing. It's Chick-fil-A. If you don't want to buy their chicken, don't buy it if you're offended by it. And I also wanted to comment on the kids that have been made to take off the Let's Go Brandon t-shirts or there, there is only two genders, um, they are allowed to speak their mind. They're allowed to express themselves. They can't go around being scared that somebody's going to get offended. You're in a world where people are going to get offended. You cannot go tiptoeing around scared to express yourself. So I think that students should be allowed to express themselves within school. And if you don't want to buy the Chick-fil-A, don't buy it. If you're offended by it, don't buy it. But kids are gonna want to raise money for their school and they wanted to do that and they were excited. You should have seen them all. They were so excited. They're like ecstatic. They're gonna go buy Chick-fil-A and raise money for their school and for the baseball team or whatever team it was. And if you do not want to buy the chicken, you're offended by their beliefs, that's fine. That's your opinion, don't buy it. But don't ruin their experience in high school. Emily's here, but she's gone once, and we've got Doug. Uh, Doug? Where's you're the coming. camera? You're coming. I'm coming. 
Um, the thing that occurs to me is that we have a lacrosse team that's promoting Little Caesars and a baseball team promoting Chick-fil-A and these are athletes and we're promoting food establishments that base pretty much all of their attraction on fat calories. and calories. An, an and so it, an enormous fat amount of fat and calories. And it seems like they're just incompatible with athletic teams. So I'm not going to speak to the liberal, conservative, whatever issues about it. It's, I think we could find something that's more consistent with our athletes trying to become better athletes and connecting in with some kind of a business or perhaps creating their own uh, businesses that they could do. There are people in the community that would hire them to do work. Mow lawns, when, rake leaves, When I was a kid cars. and when I wanted to play Little League baseball, I had to go out and mow lawns Earn your and do stuff like that. I didn't just connect in with some restaurant. So anyway, but that's my opinion. I think that we should be focusing on something that promotes health and athleticism and not something that promotes fat. We have an enormous, enormous problem with obesity in this country. And it's going to make for a lot of very unhealthy and very unhappy adults. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you. OK. Uh, I'm going to alternate back into the room. Do we have anyone else in the room? And again, if you can, if you can just add new comments, we've we've heard we we are hearing sort of the same thing over and over again. Um, Except now we're offending the vegans. Now we're offending the vegans and the people who don't like fat. It doesn't end. Uh, you don't have the floor yet. Holds on here. Lane, is that better um, on the other side of the room? I think so. Uh, how about? Albie Wood, do you have something new? Yes, hi, <clears throat> my name is, is Al Wood, um, a business owner in Randolph. I graduated from Randolph Union High School. And um, I guess my concern was over the comment about all the hatred at the school. I find that, I mean, I have other issues with the flag, um, six kids, three bio, three adopted. The adopted ones are from Africa, so obviously black. Been dealing with, with these kind of issues for 20 years now um, or so. But that being said, the, the hatred comment before, I find it really disconcerting that um, there's so much supposed hatred in the school. I have kids come to my... my um, sugar house from time to time i have a nephew there this is the i've heard of a few rumblings but the kind of sentiment that that the woman i forgot her name spoke of i don't see that in the randolph community as being as adamant as she's described it and if it's happening at school then those people the children obviously need to be um dealt with accordingly but when you're, um, when we as a community are focusing at school on sexual identity, and that becomes the main focus versus actually doing school work, that's a big issue that needs to be addressed, and it has to be addressed, as it was earlier in this meeting, talking about the, the school scores. That needs to be the focus that this school and community needs to um, be about. And also being able to uh, truly identify what different organizations obviously support. BLM has some big issues that need to be addressed. That organization has and will be probably addressed over the next year or so with some of their financial dealings. They're not the supreme organization to represent the black community by any means. And putting a flag up there to, to say that to people is foolishness. So that's, that's my comment um, for this committee so far this evening. Okay, uh, Joe Bosey. 
Joe, you're from Good evening. You're from yeah, Randolph, I'm, I'm right? Here. Can you can you can you hear me? You're able to hear me. So I, I don't have a whole lot to comment on the Chick-fil-A thing other than the fact that the school is just not being inclusive of all sides. They're only inclusive of one side and the side that they're choosing. But, and, and, and we can well see that with, with, with while well, you can't have Chick-fil-A, but maybe you can have Burger King. The, the pieces I think that are, that are more important to me is A, the last five years, my taxes have gone up 35%, yet I don't have a child in their school. That, that, be, that being said, I don't mind paying, my, paying the way, but what I do notice is if you go on Zillow and, and then look at a Randolph property, what we look at is, 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 is the schools for great, uh, or the scores for great schools summary. So the score, the test scores show us as below average, yet, yet we're paying 35% more to fund these schools and they've actually gotten nowhere. And in the last I, and our rating is a five out of 10. So a five out of 10, last I went to school, and let's face it, I graduated my high school in 1977, but that was a miserable failure. And I, and I truly believe that, that that's what we are, is a miserable failure. In the 60s, we cha we, through the, through, if, we, if we look at what happened in, in that era, we had a revolution in Woodstock and all of that. And we, and we took civics out of school and we brought in what we call social studies. And this is this I, I think in part of the result. Everybody thinks they have a right, but they don't know what's even written in their own constitution. That 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 said, I think what as we look at climate marches and 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 BLM marches and stuff like that, I think the schools need to more get out of this business of whether Chick-fil-A wants to sponsor their baseball team and provide monies to our community, which may reduce our taxes. And maybe, just maybe, we could go back to teaching kids civics and get a greater, greater score than five out of 10 in academics. You know, it's, it's, inter it's interesting that, that I, I met this young lady at where I work in a cafeteria. And I go to the cafeteria and I gave her a dollar thirty-five for for a Coke. She she turned and then I realized I had some change and I gave her actually two dollars. I gave her I gave her some gave her the thirty-five cents after the fact and she looked at me and said, "I don't know what to do." I said, "Well, you owe me a dollar back because I've given you two thirty-five. And she said, "Are you sure, Joe?" I said, "Absolutely, I'm sure. I'd never steal a dime from anybody." I said, and if, if your cash register is not right, it's not, it's not because of me. I said, by the way, where did you go to school? Randolph Union High School. That's where she went to school. So while we focus on whether somebody has a different feeling than others, we, we fail to bring our kids up correctly and give them the education they need. So Mr. Millington, I ask you, why don't you reach out and start teaching our kids versus indoctrinating them? Have a great day. Uh, Ross Evans. Hi, my name is Chloe Evans. I go to Randolph Union Middle School and there was a comment uh, made earlier about their like this person not seeing the hatred that goes on there. I've been called a racial slur since the beginning of the school year, and I am part of the LGBTQ plus community, and there are a lot of people that I've known for a while that have looked at me a lot differently, and I hear all the time my friends and just random people telling me how there were kids yelling racial slurs down the hallway and saying terrible things and making fun of LGBTQ plus kids and using the apps and I just don't understand how you couldn't see all the hatred that goes on there. That's it. Uh, Chandler Anderson. Hi, I'm kind of um building on what the last person said. Um, there's been a lot of comments about um, not seeing the hatred or not seeing the racism in the school. And that's because those comments were coming from white people who do not experience discrimination. And 
don't have the same do not see the school or the town through the same lens that um people of color or minorities do and about taking down the flag i think that that is a terrible idea because there's i just don't see any reason to take it down i understand that there are some issues with the black lives matter organization but i also think there's a key difference between the organization and the slogan um, the, or the organization is not doing any sort of sponsorship with the school, and, and it's just a message that's being displayed on the flagpole. And I think taking down the flag would be, one, saying that black lives don't matter, and two, it would be implying that all the racism in the school has been solved, which is definitely not the case. And that's all I have to say at this point. Okay, do we have, um, it's hard to know if the folks on the, there's this guy. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Hey, Joe, will, can you turn your mic off, please? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Mike started. And, uh, my son is a, is a Chick-fil-A owner. And we're very proud of him for what he's done in life. And as far as he's gotten, Chick-fil-A has been very, very supportive for him. They've done, their, he just gave out last weekend over $20,000 in scholarship to, <clears throat> to his kids that work for him. So I don't see how people in the school can degrade Chick-fil-A when they're doing all this stuff for our kids. And I think Lynn could get a little info if he would return some of his phone calls when people call and want to talk to him instead of just blowing them off and not getting back to him, such as myself. Um, I was there last Thursday, and here it is Wednesday, and I still haven't heard from him. So he's, and that's why I'm standing up today, is because he needs to hear from us, and he needs to get good information. My son found out today from from corporate that he should call Lynn and talk to him about this problem and he refuses to call him back so maybe we need to get rid of him and get somebody in there that will listen to the public I'm a taxpayer I have no kids in school anymore and I've lived here all my life we were born here we we're graduated pretty, RUH as both of us and both of our children and we're proud of our kids and we're proud of what they're doing and you guys are just looking the opposite direction, obviously. I think, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I know there's one but that thinks he don't need to get any information from anybody else. And Chick-fil-A hires all minorities, blacks, Hispanics, whites. They help them out. They, they, they do scholarships. Um, they do fundraisers. They do all of this. So it's not my uh, son is married to uh, Jamaican, so we are not racist, and Chick-fil-A is not racist. I mean, there are these people, a lot of these people are judging the Chick-fil-A from this Boston episode. Well, we have two men that are married that own the Chick-fil-A in downtown Boston, and we have another one in Maine. So how can you guys hold that against them? I mean, it's just wrong. So I'd actually like to speak as a Randolph resident, and I think I probably earned the time. Um, I spent a good deal of time at the open forum last night, and that open forum was specifically designed for open discussion. A board meeting and public comments are not. So it's curious to me why folks didn't show up last night to have the discussion and actually hear from me and ask me questions when I actually invited people to ask me questions about my decisions last night. No one did. One person asked me a question last night, and John, that was you. And, you never and if I remember, it. I have the floor. <laughs> because I thought you were joking. Oh, and, hold you on. and And if uh, I remember, the question was is whether or not I asked the coach or told the coach, um, you know, not to do Chick Fil A or not. That was the one question with an hour and a half availability of folks last night. 
So we're going to talk about a couple of other misconceptions that are being thrown around here tonight. In terms of test scores, and I'm happy to put it right up on the screen, until COVID hit, our district's test scores for the first time in a decade were improving by 4% or more per year. And then COVID hit. So there's number two. In terms of the actual decision that was made around Chick-fil-A that no one asked me about last night, and I was so surprised that that was the case, I'm happy to talk about that. A concern was brought to me by community members about the fact that Chick-fil-A was chosen. I knew nothing about the controversy of Chick-fil-A, so I did my research and I did some investigation just like all administrators do when we get concerns from community members. And I want to read something to you really quick and then talk a little bit about the decision. Policy statement from the Orange Southwest School District. The Orange South School District is committed to providing all of its students with a safe and supportive school environment in which all members of the school community are treated with respect. And I ask you, which is less respectful? Asking the baseball team to change vendors for a fundraiser or asking the LGBTQ community, of which there's about 7 to 10% in our school district, to support as part of the school collective a company that has actively tried to take away their civil rights for nearly a decade. I don't think there's an equivalency here. The act, of, the act of seeking to take away a group's civil rights, rights that all other human beings share, is an attempt to make them less human. The decision that was made was the right one. Wrong. But that's not true. That's not true what you just read. Hold on. You don't have any more. Hold on. The, uh, uh, that sort of a conversation was for last night. Court. I still you have the floor. Nobody started speaking either. I still have the floor. Yeah. Nobody gave him the floor. He didn't say he just spoke up. Just like okay. we are. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to call call it. We got one more right here. We have no reason. I, I think we, we've heard loud and clear. So now we're being silenced? No, you're not that being silenced. Like we've heard you. I, I think... One more week. Obviously, he didn't hear us. He's, he's going against us, saying he made the right decision. So there is a complaint procedure. So, and... And by then, the fundraiser's done. 200 grand a year. 200 grand a year. There is a complaint procedure. If you move on it quickly, we can always do a special meeting. But you, just like... The other, the, every other complaint that we have, we, we have a process. You need to follow the process in order for it to come to the board and for us to even look at that issue. So you're asking the board, you're here to, to express yourselves, but we as a board can't look at the decision that he's made and assess whether or not it was an appropriate decision without you following our complaint procedure. Did, the did they, they follow it? Okay. Did they follow it? The ones that complained about the Chick-fil-A fundraiser? They no. followed it. Yes, process? they went they went they followed to the complaint process? They did. They went to Lane and they <laughs> of course. That's the process. Yeah. 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 Yes, okay. that is part of the process. process. And what has happened is you have gone to Lane and he and you are not happy with he what he's told. He lied to us. The coach was gracious about it. Okay. That was not true. Okay, so so there is the issue. The issue is, if you did not get the 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 response that you wanted, you got no response. You got no response. Then that is your time to then write a letter to the board chair to say. This is what's happened. We want the board to look into it because at this point, the board is just here listening to your public comment, but we need to have the real process. And if so you get that letter, letter where's the letter from just, the, you just send an email down. to the board chair. To the board chair. So if you look on our website, you will see what our complaint procedure is. But if you want the board to address it, you have to follow that process. No, I did that two months ago, and I have heard nothing from the board. I made a complaint about the superintendent and all three principals. 
in, in writing in email, and I have not heard back from you. Uh, it was one of the things I was going to talk about tonight, but you cut me off, so I didn't get a chance to. It must not have been clear. You responded to me. Yes, I responded to you. And I've heard nothing since. You said you'd look into it, and you'd talk to Lane. And that's I'll, what I got. I'll have, you'll have to email with me because... I will send it back to you. Because I didn't... If I had seen a clear complaint... Oh, it then, was very clear. Can you check Okay, now? then... I, I just had two questions I'm, about last night's forum. Was the whole board at last night's forum? No. That was for the community to was speak it warned? with the administration. Okay. And uh, was, was it, it warned? Was it televised and so on? Was it? No. As it is it was, here. No, am, am, I, am I allowed to speak on? Yes. Since everybody's, yes, I'm going to let it's, it's interesting. I'm here. I'm sitting right here, and everybody is telling me what I've done and what I've thought. And, 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 and mo most like of it, unfortunately, yeah, still sit there. So yes, uh, Doug, to start, first people did respond to you. You were asked to follow the, the conflict resolution protocol. And that started out with talking with the coach, then talking with the athletic director, then talking with the principal, and then talking with me. Follow the procedure. I will be happy to get back to you. But you were communicated with and you were asked to follow the procedure. In terms of last night, I sent out a broadband um, message to the community about the open forum and that this would be a, a place to talk about this. And I even included the link to that forum um, to folks prior to that meeting so that folks could attend. So, we so yes, that, that, that so, was right, so we wouldn't be in front we of the board. Come here. It's the That's board we here. wanted to talk to. It wasn't you meeting. that we wanted okay. to talk to. Our problem is with you. We want to talk to your employers. Okay. So again, conflict you've got to follow yeah. our the, the conflict. So write a letter. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. So is there Everybody should write a letter. Is there documentation of the complaint that led to Mr. Millington canceling the, when the we, fundraiser. when the board looks at it, we will be looking at how those. You should already know, those, you should already know this. Yes you canceled no. it. How could you cancel it if we you didn't look it. at it? Can, can I answer the question? Because yeah. you're asking, then you're asking an operational. That's an operational decision. We have we have given that to Lane. We have policies in place that guide what he is allowed to do for ethical and professional reasons. And if he does not, and if he does something that upsets the public or that the public feels crosses a boundary in terms of ethics and professionalism, then there is a way for the members of the public to let us know in writing what's happened so that we can investigate it. And that happened when they asked for Chick-fil-A to be canceled, correct? No, no exactly. because if it doesn't, re it didn't reach the board. That was it, they went. Because they went. Through. They started. So he, overrode the he, yes. he overrode the protocols. What happened? No, no, no you're not understanding. Yes. Yes. No, yes. so that was. Yes. On that it just depends on who complains. Okay. Okay. We just need to write letters. I just want to say I'm sad so that this is the educational environment my kids would have to be in if I chose to send them to school as a Braintree resident. But because it's so disturbing, I am not sending my kids here at this time. That's all. It's not really just, I just think it's okay. disgusting. Okay. Uh, No, they don't know what I'm saying. The board has a number of vendors about kids. Okay. The board has a number of vendors. Okay. So we're ready to move to move on. Um, so can you move on? We heard that last night, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, boy. Don't say move on. I'll get through. Can I just say something really quickly? I'm sorry, just really quickly about the education, not about Chick Fil A or anything like that. Just, I'll be quick. <clears throat> no, I I think we've heard well, enough. I've, I've missed two years of my math education because of the school. They failed me. I went two years without a math class, and I am embarrassed to say that I struggle with basic math because RUHS failed me. I've tried. I emailed. I talked to teachers, and they kicked me out of a class. I walked in, I sat down because I was supposed to be in that class, and he goes, what's your name, what's all that? And I go, I'm Grace, I'm here to be in the math class. Because during quarantine, I had no math class. No math class, no math education. 
he kicked me out because I wasn't I wasn't allowed to be there. I'm, I guess I had never been in that class. I had never met the teacher, okay. and they kicked me out. And I have had two years missed of my education we're, because your school we're failed understanding. me. Understanding, we are hearing. You're not what understanding because I've no. missed two years. This is not the time to What's talk. Not, it is the time. It's we're talking about our school. We're talking about kids' education. Why shouldn't we putting be putting our education first? We're talking about all this politics and everything. Why can't we like? You say no politics in school, yet you still fly that flag. Why can't we put the kids first? We're I struggle with basic math because the school couldn't provide me what I needed. And I think it's ridiculous. The Black Lives Matter flag I'm, is I'm not sorry. a political hey, issue. We're not going to. It absolutely is. Donate to Democratic initiatives. We're done with public comments. If you'd like to stay for the rest of the meeting, you're welcome to. Well, we're talking but about this. We're going to. You're failing. Stop you're failing the students. Grace, I'm sorry. Right We're now, we students. need to move on to the rest of our meeting. Okay. Um, so, do we have our? I'm sorry, Scott. You know what? Okay. So we are going to be interviewing our two candidates from Brookfield. So we'll see if Scott pops back in, hopefully. All right. So that went a little bit longer than we allotted. Is Pedro been here all time? He might have. <laughs> I asked him to come back, but. Is that Pedro? Mm -hmm. And he was planning on 650 anyway for, because that's where we should should be at. The, but he'll be all right. Okay, so, but we don't, do we, we don't need him for this section of the, okay. Um, and were you able to get Scott on? I emailed him, I'm looking to see if he pops in. Okay. If not, we've got Devin. Okay. Yeah. And we could start with um, Devin. So hopefully, um, so um, just, well, I'm going to wait just a few more minutes. I just, I just texted Scott. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, he's, he's, in, he's in a training, so. So if folks can just get organized, remember we're going to have about 20 minutes where we're going to um, ask them to. Uh, speak a little bit about why they want to be on the board. Maybe after public comment, it might not want to be on the board. Ten minutes each. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so we're going to give them a couple of minutes to to ask, to uh, explain why they'd like to be on the board, and then um, then we can ask questions, um, asking that uh, the board have that we're going to ask both candidates to um, answer the same question. So whatever question, um, we'll have both of them uh, answer that question. And then um, we're going to deliberate in executive session. Should we move on to table until Scott comes on? OK, we could do that. Have you heard anything? Yeah, I haven't heard no, anything. I haven't seen anything. OK, so we'll. Table until we hear from Scott. We'll just put. Um, we'll bring that back to the to um, the floor once once he arrives. So the next up is the date for the policy governance um, training, and um, I think most of us have put in the date dates that work for us for the training. Uh, I think we're waiting on yeah, Rachel yeah. and Katja and Hannah. There was one Monday that worked for like almost every single person. Did you who, heard? who or has every single person who had responded? And I was like, so oh, far. I bet that'll be the day. But. It was June first. Okay. Okay. Does so we're looking work? maybe toward June first, but it's a Wednesday. You said it's a Wednesday. You said it's a Monday. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. June first is a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. 
What time does it start? Is it just one time? Uh, it's it's an initial <laughs> consultation, and then and then we'll we'll go from there in terms okay. of um, additional training. My my calendar's clear, so far. So. Okay. Um, so are you getting that. that, Linda? So Wednesday, it's looking like Wednesday, June first okay. yep. will work. Um, and I think we were looking at five thirty to. I yeah, I don't remember exactly what was on there. Um, so, uh, Linda, will you, you'll be in touch with Jackie? Asked me okay. Me okay. Awesome. Uh, so next up is the um, COVID operating plan. Just any um, updates, Lane? Yeah. So it looks like it looks like there was an older copy in the board packets. Would make sense because we've revised the thing so many times. Um, COVID operating plan for folks to know is always available in its most updated form right on the OSSD website. Last time it was updated was on March 14th. Um, some basic things changed then that, that, that folks should be well aware of at this point in time. Um, Agency of Education rescinded all guidance in terms of COVID and has asked districts to follow the general guidance of the Vermont Department of Health instead. So there is no more school specific guidance at this point in time. Um, masking became recommended, uh, but optional, um, and that includes on district buses. All restrictions on extracurricular activities and field trips have been lifted. There are no COVID-related restrictions on volunteers or visitors um, in terms of entering the school buildings. Um, the nurses with parental consent will still test um, symptomatic students as long as the parents have obviously consented um, for COVID, and the district will still provide um, at-home test kits as necessary and as, as available. Um, I think that's going to probably switch over at some point in time that folks will be getting it through their insurance companies. Um, the district uh, will still send out general notifications of potential exposure when we identify a positive case within our schools and at athletic events masking is optional but highly recommended and our teams must follow the rules of any school they visit. So if you're the visiting team you follow the home team's rules. And so those are the basic changes. Um, from the last time that we met. Okay. Are there any concerns among the board members? We feel like he's keeping our staff and students all safe. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, the second uh, reading on the ADA grievance protocol for students and staff. This is a required policy from the state. Um, and we looked at it at the last meeting, so uh, we're just looking to, uh, for any discussion and a motion to adopt the policy. So are there any last questions on that policy? I'll make a motion to adopt the policy. Uh, Do we have a second? A second. Seconded by Rachel. Uh, any discussion? All those in, play, in favor, please say aye. Those aye. online. Aye. And I think we just have Sarah online. I think she's. Speak up, Sarah, if you if you have any <laughs> any. Um, any concerns? Okay, uh, next up, and this may lead to uh, another long discussion. Any sign of Scott? He, I just uh, texted him, he's um, caught up at the moment, but I told him he's gonna jump on as soon as he can. Okay, okay. PHO is here. Okay. Um, we didn't do the financial report. Okay, the financial report. oh, I skipped over that? Where, where? Under, under, three. under three. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. So the financial reports, and again, this is in relation to just monitoring the financial conditions um, of the district. Yeah, they're, they are in the packet. Uh, March financial statement represents about nine months of the 2021-22 um, fiscal school year meaning that we should have spent about 75% of our overall budget at this point in time because we're 75% uh, the way through the fiscal year. Um, because of federal reimbursements and the inability to hire some staff, um, staffing shortages have been 
nationwide this year, mm -hmm. some of the folks that we wanted. We're well in the black in terms of the budget. Only about 59% of it has been expended at this point in time. Um, the one thing that did stick out a little bit as I did the review um, and talked with the business manager was that uh, under technology expenditures, the supply line shows us being overspent by about $116,000. Um, this is due to the cost of software subscriptions that were put into place to support uh, remote learning. We had to sign at the beginning of the year. We weren't quite sure, you know, what the year was going to hold for us. But it will all be reimbursed. Um, and so the reimbursements will come in and cover that. Um, other than that, everything actually looked very, very good. Okay. Any questions for my picture? Okay. Uh, Next up, uh, legislative. Uh, no, not not in this section. Um, uh, legislative update. The a lot of parts and pieces. Um, I had intended to actually put this in as part of the superintendent's report um, as the summary. Um, there's not much that's changed. I'm happy to go through, though, and remind folks of, of the parts and pieces. Um, there's been some, some minor changes. Um, S-162 that dealt with collective bargaining rights for teachers. Um, one of the concerns that came up was that it would have allowed teachers to sign contracts with the district to then break their contracts to accept employment elsewhere. Um, at the last round of information I got, the provision from that bill, it sounds like, has been removed. Um, S-287 that deals with education funding, it looks like folks have settled on adjusting the current weights to determine district allocations. They were having some discussions about a, a sort of a block um, system. Um, went through it, the language is pretty dense and the mathematics are a little unclear the way that it was worded. Um, but based upon what I can tell, um, our district should see a significant increase in ed fund allocations just because of the, the, the number of students that we have that are um, disadvantaged economically. Um, so it, it should be a benefit to this district. Um, S-286 um, <coughs> attempts to make the teacher's pension system solvent um, somewhat by adjusting pension benefits and using what they're calling a blended contribution rate. Um, so it sounds like everyone in the system would have their own unique rate of what they need to contribute uh, to, into the pension system that's based upon their income. Um, Act 173, um, and this was the big one that's been discussed for a number of years now and I believe was put on hold a little bit when COVID hit. Um, but this was changing over uh, special education funding from reimbursement to a block grant model. Um, I think after some good discussions, um, the legislature wanted to try to make sure that people were held harmless. There were some districts that were going to benefit immensely from it and some that were going to be, be hurt a little bit in terms of what their expected um, allocations were going to be. And so they set up a, a system where um, you know districts are going to be provided with the average amount they received over a three-year period. There's actually two three-year periods that they could choose from. But And how will that impact us? Uh, right now? Um, Based upon the information that we were given um, to be able to calculate the budget at budget time, um, we took a $200,000 head. Um, whether or not this changes when this is fully passed, uh, we'll, we'll find out. Um, so, my guess is it will it will help us recoup that that $200,000. Um, S100 um, Universal School Meals, um, as I think folks know that during the pandemic, the federal government gave um, lots of funding to make sure that folks were getting fed. And so we were able to provide, you know, breakfasts and lunches um, to all students regardless of economic status. And so there's an effort to keep that going across the state of Vermont. I think it's primarily focused on breakfast right now. Um, but the question, question is, is um, that was unclear in the readings that I was able to do was, you know, which which fund is it going to impact? Where, where, where will the money come from for this after the federal grant funding dries out? So. We've kept it um, with lunch as well, that bill. And yep. uh, the yield bill is where we would source that money as of now, about $36 million carved out from the ed surplus. Yep. As a, a member of the House Education Committee, I can say that everything Lane just told you is accurate. 
<laughs> I should try to get you to come to town meeting. <laughs> um, and before I leave, I'd just like to say thank you all for your service to our communities. Um, this is clearly not easy stuff. Yeah. Now you can applaud. Oh, on a good note. Um, I'm applauding them. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> um, on, a, on, a, on a high note, too, uh, it's true. We might even see a three and a half or four cent property tax relief uh, impact from S. Uh, 287. So we should have told that to all those folks before they left. <laughs> yeah, no, we get we get we get updates. They come in come in sporadically, so it, it changes quite a bit. So yeah, it, it's hard to try to decide when it's best to report out because things are aren't quite finished. True. But, no, yeah. it's all right. This That's is good stuff. Right. So um, again, thank you all for your for your work and Lane, well done. I appreciate. Thanks, you you Dad. take care. Be safe. Yeah. See you later. Any sign of Scott yep. yet? <laughs> okay. Um, just do it. Yeah. So we'll, shall, we'll move on yes. to the, the flag policy. So this is um, the first reading of the flag policy. So this is an opportunity um, for the board to ask some questions and um, just uh, Hopefully, folks have taken a look at it, um, and we have Pietro to um, uh, go over it a little bit, if if folks would like that. Um, Pietro to present at the rationale. Okay, so Pietro, are you hearing? Uh, Katja would is is um, asking if you might just go over the rationale for. Uh, what what uh, the the way the policy is written and and why? Yeah, yeah. So um, what what you will recall is we had a conversation some time ago where I suggested that the board needed to have a policy around flags. It's an issue of great interest and some controversy presently. Um, decisions had to be made about what was the best policy for the district. It's not something that ought to be decided in the individual buildings, it really is a question for the board to decide at a policy level. The, the issues that you all grappled with at the time was the concept that um, if, if we allow some flags to fly on our flagpole at the request of groups within the district, then our ability to decline um, from other groups would be diminished. And the challenge was going to be for the board um, do, do we want to find ourselves in a position where um, we have to say yes to some views that are, in our view, antithetical to the values of the district? Or, or would we prefer to have a policy where no flags fly and therefore you would never be in that position? Um, there was an alternative. The, the, the other alternative was for the board not to take requests, to make decisions on it, its own and to have the flag be what it would be called government speech, meaning that this is not a place where the public gets to express its feelings. It's a place where the board can make decisions about what ought to fly in terms of flags and what ought not fly. And ultimately, the consensus of the board was that it would be best to avoid any potential litigation um, around which flags would fly and which ones would not by saying that we would only have the American and Vermont flags fly on school flagpoles. So we've, we've all read the policy, we've discussed it. Um, are, there, are there comments that board members like to make or do we have any concerns given what the policy is now? And if none, um, I will open it up to uh, some public comment. Again, we're going to keep it to three minutes per person. And um, there's a little typo on the flag policy. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. We'll fix it. So, it's in uh, paragraph four. 
the end of the line. Flown. Maybe flown. Ah, oh, good. Um, <laughs> <and> flown. <laughs> So is this a time when the public can ask questions and the board responds, or does the public just comment? Comment. I believe. It's, it's yeah. Just we're not voting on anything. We're not voting it's on anything. It's a second reading. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's well, it's a first reading. Right. But, so we, but it needs a second reading before we vote. Mm -hmm. Should we read it so everyone can hear it? Yeah. Or does everyone does, know it? Does everybody Has everyone know? read it? Heard? Linda, did you give well, a and copy? Well, and Pietro has pretty much said what the policy is. It's going out, but it'll be on the website, but I don't know if people read it. It's in the agenda. I'll read it. Okay. Flight policy. Under Vermont law, the Orange Southwest School District is a municipality and a government body. This, the district school board supports the exercise of protected free speech by students and staff. The board does not believe, however, that flagpoles at school buildings in the district should be public forums for free speech. Public forums are places where all protected speech must be allowed. Under Vermont law, each school must have a flagpole on the premises, and while school is in session, the school, the school must fly the United States flag. Vermont law also permits the district to display a Vermont state flag. It is the policy of the district that only the Vermont and United States flags may be flown on the school flagpoles. It is the policy of the district to encourage free speech in other appropriate locations and circumstances. Okay. So um, I'm going to open open it up for again some public comment. Again, if we can refrain from saying the same thing, if someone's already said what you believe. Um, then I would ask out of uh, time consideration that you um, seize your time to somebody else. Uh, so, and I would like to speak, but I would also ask that we could yeah. defer to our students who are here in person and remotely and hear from them first since this is their school and their work and this decision is going to impact them. So, do we have some students here who would like to speak, or shall I move to the online? So, up, oh, go ahead. I'm Joseph, I'm a senior at Randolph Houston High School, and this means a lot to me. The flag represents a lot more than people might think at first. It, re it represents our support for the never-ending fight for racial equality. The Racial Justice PBL has done some amazing things, including fundraising and raising awareness. The flag is a representation of how we strive for anti-racism and how the school is supposed to be a place where anyone can belong and feel safer than their own skin. It reminds us of the, of the long journey we've been on in trying to confront racial biases not only in our school but within our country, work that we're still doing today. By flying, the, as a school community, we feel the need to speak up for the people who feel like they don't have a voice or are not represented in our school. In raising the flag, we can show support for students of color. And do we have any other students who would like to speak here in the room? I'm going to move to the online. Group. So, Ilya, Andrea. Hi, um, I'm a senior at Randolph, um, and I just wanted to say that the flag, the BLM flag, um, gives an ethnic minority in a largely white and historically racist student population a visible and proud reminder that the school supports those minorities. I want to clarify that the uh, whites are not a minority, as some uh, members here at the at the forum seem to think. Um, and yeah, I think that being told that your life as an ethnic minority in the town still matters, um, despite what students, peers, and adults may say, is not a political message, um, and it's not assaulting any community members with liberal induction ideas. Um, it is a reinsurance
that the school does not stand by the direct or indirect racism that white students and their parents display in the school setting. Um, I think many of our taxpaying community members are afraid of these anti-racist beliefs because they're a signal of change. Um, but it's actually not that scary. It's, it's just love and it's learning to love the people who are hurt most in our communities. Thank you. Uh, Emily Baker. Hi. Um, so I have some very strong opinions on the flag and my beliefs in why it should be flown at OUHS as one of the founding members of the racial justice PBL in my sophomore year of high school, I dedicated hours and many weeks of my life to doing research and educating students and faculty members and even having really tough conversations with family members about why flying this flag is so important and how it makes people feel included and welcome in a space that throughout my education and many of my fellow peers' educations have felt very violent and unwelcoming and very unsafe for queer and BIPOC students who are in a primarily white school that has had a history of not showing support and kindness and love towards its students. And how are we supposed to better ourselves and better our community and our education if we feel unsafe entering into a building where we are supposed to feel safe? We are supposed to have these rights to an education, to a safe environment where we feel included and loved, but our school is failing, our community is failing. And by taking down this symbol of inclusivity and love at this school and saying it's politicized when it's a basic human right, it is saying that this human life matters. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing political about that. And the fact that it is being politicized is disgusting. And I I know I don't go to school there anymore, but I'm still young. I'm still an, in the process of getting my education. I want to be an educator and I want to look at Randolph as a future option for me educating. And I don't think I can do that if these policies continue to negatively affect students at this school. Thank you. I see Emmeline Caswell there, but I don't see a, a hand up, so. Chandler, I don't know if Chandler and Albie were from the other, Vicki is new, I know that. Oh, and Albie oh. is not a student. I don't believe. Yeah. Oh, maybe Albie does have a student who wants to speak. I can't remember who Albie is. No, no. I, I do not have a student. Okay, there. okay. Sorry. But no worries. Who does want to comment? So are we doing uh, this? Yeah, so Chandler, are the, uh, Chandler has. <laughs> no, he doesn't have his hand up anymore. Uh, he does? Where? Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't see. All right, Chandler. Uh, I believe that Chandler is um, no longer at the meeting. He's, he's, um, he's still logged into it, but uh, I think he's at a track meet now. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. uh. Okay, and and I'll be lowered. No, he still has his up. And Emily, you wanted to speak I will, after yeah. the students, so yeah. I'm going to start with you since you wanted to speak after. The My name is Emily Therian. I'm the director of targeted supports at Randolph Union. I also taught English and social studies and partnered with Dana and students in forming the racial justice PBL. Um, this board has heard us speak on this topic before, so um, I won't belabor the point. You've heard the process that we went through and our rationale for raising that flag. And y'all are going to make the decision that you're going to make. 
what I would ask of you is that you consider how that will impact our students and the message that that is sending to them. And if you decide to take down that flag based on the legal advice and the information that you have, what will you do instead to hold our district and our schools and our school leaders accountable to ensure that all students in our building are safe and have access to an education and feel valued? Because as someone who spends hours in that building every single day, five days a week, um, I have an hour and 15 minute commute one way. I've made that commute for seven years and I can tell you it's not for the money. <laughs> um, it is because of these students who are here in front of us right now. It is because of my students who are scared to come to school because of the hate that they experience. And I would challenge anyone who voices that there isn't hate or bigotry or homophobia or racism in our school to actually come and spend some time in our building. Um, because I can tell you with confidence, I have first person experience, I've witnessed that, I've been part of investigations, I've had those painful conversations with students. And again, I would ask of the board, if you make the decision to take down this flag, then I respectfully invite you to come in to those schools and to have those conversations with students like the Racial Justice PBL did with each advisory in our school building over the course of weeks. I would invite you to do the same, to have that conversation and do the work that we've done if you're gonna make this decision. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move back to the online folks. Uh, let's see. Albie, I think you were ahead of Vicki, I remember. Yep. Hi there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I've been listening uh, quite a bit to what's been said. Uh, again, not a parent there. Um, but a graduate from there and uh, part of the community as a business owner. And like I said before, father of six children, three of whom are African American. Um, so I've been dealing with, with some of these issues for sure um, as a parent. I, I guess I'm again concerned about the number of times I've heard tonight how much hate is in our school, in, the, in our community school. And so, I mean, I'd, I'd kind of like a number, like are there 10 kids that are like this, 20 kids that are like this, 100 kids that are like this? I mean, to have that much hate being going on in our school, that obviously is a huge problem. Um, and obviously needs to be addressed for sure. I mean, racism obviously exists and it goes both ways. I've dealt with that. You know, when um, that's all part of, of growing up in this culture is dealing with a race issue. There's no doubt about that. And we as adults have to continue to lead and guide our kids in a loving manner towards each other. Bottom line, I don't even, the color issue in our house, it comes down to, do you bleed red? That's my biggest color issue in my house. That is it. Other than that, you are loved. And I try to love you. Uh, as best I can throughout your growing years in forever as a parent. So a lot of concern there about that, for sure. A lot of concern about supporting a flag that's been up there for two years um, when other flags don't. I personally have issues with, with the organization and what it represents um, on a some levels, not every level. I think it started out great. And over time, like a lot of things, money and power overtook it. And there's some issues there that need to be addressed. And if we can't even say that without feeling condemned, that's scary. And being, as one student said, I am a white privileged person. Well, I'll tell you, my mom grew up in this community. She had an outhouse. I didn't grow up all that privileged. 
I understand the white thing gives us some privilege, but there are also, this is where the whole race thing is not addressed equally. There are some very privileged black, black people in the society too, maybe not in Vermont, but if we start to engage in this um, whole um, thing about, well, you're privileged, I'm not privileged, and we go back and forth about that. What are we talking, in terms of humanity, where are we? And as teachers, some of the teachers I talk to are great. I'm not, again, sure. If we have some teachers that are being hateful, why are they still there? Alvi, your time is uh, coming to a close. So I will close with... Um, I appreciate the views of, of everybody there. And I think we need to be able to do that as a community without being obviously hateful. And just because someone doesn't practice another type of living style doesn't mean they're hateful towards another person. We just may disagree on a, on a different lifestyle, but that doesn't mean we're hateful if we don't practice it either way. Okay. So I will be reaching out to some people who spoke tonight because there's a lot of hurt in this community that needs to be addressed for sure. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yes, I'm in the room here. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Martha? So I would like to follow up on what was suggested there. I am somebody that has been very engaged in following this BLM flag kinds of concerns and not only here in other settings and my father was there for the MLK I have a dream speech and this is something that I've grown up with and to see that our country suddenly taking a turn and dividing over this issue really grieves my heart and I very much would like to come in and be able to chat with your people. I'm a teacher by background, I've worked with kids all, all my life, started a children's home in Guatemala and, and, and I. It's very important to me that children understand that there is a love foundation and not something that's trust and hate about. Thank you. Uh, do we have others? John? Yep. Uh, I want to say I agree with Mr. Wood, and I think I made those comments yesterday that we need to like really teach everybody to get along uh, in general. Um, the proposed policy documented in last month's agenda is the correct policy to have, the one read tonight. Only the U.S. and Vermont flags should be flown on school property. The BLM flag should not continue to fly at RUHS for several reasons. First, as I've said before at these meetings, the flag draws requests for other flags to fly, some of which may not be very palatable, uh, but would have to be flown in the interest of impartial free speech per the First Amendment and the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution. I want to remind everybody that in a Burlington PD case about two years ago, the Vermont Supreme Court said that hate speech was free speech in the state of Vermont. And what would happen if somebody brought that hate speech in the form of like a KKK flag and said, I want to fly that at RUHS. I want my turn on the flag. That would be horrible. I would hate to see that. But the Vermont Supreme Court said that hate speech is free speech, and they could make that request, and you'd have a really hard time denying it. I don't want to see that happen, and you should stick with the policy you read tonight. Second, and this is my belief, I believe that we are all created equal and endowed by our Creator, as it states in the Declaration of Independence. I also believe that we are all created in the image of God for the Bible. So with that said, when I talk about BLM, I am not talking about a race of people because we are all the race of Adam, all of us, all races and creeds. When I talk about BLM, I am talking about the organization and its foundations, not any race of person. No race of person in America should be exalted over any other race. That is wrong. We should be judged by the content of our character, not the color of our skin. So BLM, the part people might not like about this talk, but it needs to be discussed, to have a real honest discussion. Two of the three founders of BLM, Patrice Colores and Alicia Garza, have professed to be trained Marxists. For those who are unaware of history, Marxism is the foundation of socialism and communism, and more associated with communism today. Communism is antithetical to the constitutional republic that we have in Vermont and the US. Communism and constitutional republics uh, cannot coexist. 
one of them must go. The organization of BLM on its uh, website originally called for dismantling of the nuclear family and defunding the police. The defunding of the police is still on the site today, and we've all seen how that's worked out around the country. Not very well. A lot of violence going on. Um, BLM sanctioned a 2020 New York City march in which the marchers chanted, what do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them now? Also at a 2020 BLM march, they chanted, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. As of late, the New, as of late, the New York City BLM chapter president said that if NYPD went back to plainclothes policing, the New York, uh, the New York City would burn. John, your time is Just real short close. at the end. The children at RUHS may have a different meaning for the BLM flag, that being a showing of support for black students, and I applaud them for that. But in all reality, the flying of the BLM flag has a much greater and dubious meaning due to the tenets and practices of the organization and its Marxist founders. Okay. The flag should Thank come you. down. No one. Hi. Hi. Um, I also want to thank you all for doing this job because it's not easy along with teaching, um, teaching our students and trying to help a community. It's not easy and we come up to times where we need to be heard but we also have to hear other people because this is where anger comes from. Um, I'm first wanting to say, I don't think there's any parent out there that doesn't know how much I love their student, no matter who they are, no matter what they believe in. I listen to them, I agree with them. I never put my own theories or my own ideologies into, into their beliefs whatsoever. Um, um, I helped start racial justice four years ago because Walking down the hallways, and I've said this before to the board meeting, walking down the hallways um, and hearing hatred against our minority, my, I can't talk, sorry, I had a medical thing today and I'm a little lightheaded, but um, marginalized students, um, it was hurtful. I like would go home and cry. I, I wanted to make a change so that everybody was heard because that's who I am as a teacher and that's why I teach. I care about our youth. Um, since that um, time, we spent, like Emily said and a couple of our students said, many, many hours and there was a protocol that was held to have this flag flown. We didn't just put it up. There was years of um, community engagement, school engagement, um, work, policy work. The students spent a lot of time and still spend a lot of time four years later on this matter. I invite, along with Emily, she kind of, we are kind of the same person, we melded into one. I invite people in and into my class that isn't a mandatory class, but it's a class that students choose to take. Um, and we talk about this, and we talk about why it's hurting the community, and we have community forums, and we start um, creating more of um, more of a togetherness around this issue than having people just yell at each other because that's not going to get anywhere. Um, I have so many things written down and I didn't say anything and I know I only have three minutes. I don't believe being, being black, brown, indigenous, Middle Eastern, Asian descent um, is a political matter. Um, we have the BLM flag up there with a hashtag on it because that is something that was student led. Um, uh, and, and also like being, having different abilities and being gay is also not a choice. This is um, who people are and we need to just accept them and that's what we're doing in this class. Um, I think taking it down without these community forums will be detrimental to this town and to the school. Um, I also, um, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place because I'm this is an emotional thing for me because we've done a lot of work around this and I know how hard my students care. Um, so although, okay, I'll be done. Although um, my last words are, and it's coming deeply from my heart, and I think, I'm not calling anybody out, but I think like students here know that I deeply love them, but I'm exhausted and this fight can't just be with a couple of people and I don't even want to fight. I just want everyone to 
be accepted and respect each other. So that's all. Just quickly, um, I get that the policy is cleaner if you just have the American and the Vermont flag, and that's the easier legal uh, decision, but what about our brave decision? Mm -hmm. What about the actions behind? The flag is just a symbol of the work we do as a community. Right now, can we say that we can justify having that flag up right now? Are we doing the work necessary to, to live up to that flag, saying that Black Lives Matter? I just wanna consider that it is easier and, and every lawyer, if there's any other lawyers in this, in this community right here, um, would say it's the, it's the easiest thing to do, but is it the right thing to do? Emeline, you have your hand up? Yes, um, I do. I would like to uh, speak on behalf of the students at my school. Um, as you know, my name is Emeline Caswell. I'm in eighth grade um, at RUHS. And I have heard um, throughout our hallways and, and in classrooms all around our school hatred everywhere. I have been part of this hatred multiple times, like not um, giving it to people, but I have been the person that has like had it thrown at them. And it's horrible. I don't see um, why. I know that it says the Vermont state flag should be, should stay up and it has to be up and the American flag should be. Um, America is supposed to be the land of the free and the BLM flag is for people fighting for their freedom and for their rights. And I don't see why they can't have a flag because we fought for our flag. Why can't they fight for theirs to be in places as well? Thank you. Thank you. Drew Messier? Hi. I don't have a big speech planned or anything, but I have a couple points I want to mention. First, as a member of the Racial Justice PBL at Randolph, it honestly kind of disgusts me to hear the BLM flag being compared to, say, the KKK flag, or in this case, even a Nazi flag. I think they're completely different. And kind of disregards what people have gone through the fight for the Black Lives Matter moment and the points of discrimination against police. Police are not a racial minority. They're not a minority at all. They have power. And I just, I'm really disappointed about some of the things I've heard in this meeting today. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Pusheen. Ricky Johnson. I'm I'm going with the students. Yeah, it's Stormy Trombley again. Um, I don't have much to add, but I I agree with Drew Messier. Sorry. Uh, Vicky. Thanks. Um, so a flag is a symbol, and symbols are important. And so having a discussion about the symbol, while really difficult, is a really good thing for our community to be doing. And I thought it would be important for, to talk about what this symbol means for, for me. Um, three years ago, a study was done on the experiences of students of color at RU. And uh, the report was disturbing and frankly pretty damning. And I remember being at the same time horrified and also not really surprised, which is of course, all the more horrifying. Brave students were speaking out about their experiences in the school and in this town. And the truth is, is it's, it can be really hard to grow up as a student of color here in Randolph. 
And so slowly we began the work of trying to recognize and rectify the harms that we were allowing and even doing to our students. Yeah, I, I'm a science teacher. It's, it's tempting and easier for me to let a whispered comment in the back of the room slide and move on to teaching about molecules and forces. That's my comfort zone, but it's not right. Walking past that flag every morning reminds me of the commitment that I made to honor and protect all of our students, to recognize that that their students, are, their, that their experiences are different from each other, and to work to make this a learning community a place that is welcoming to everyone. Seeing that flag reminds me that I made a commitment to not let this happen again. I think that removing the flag is also a symbol. To me, it suggests mission accomplished, the work is done, everything is fine. All our students are having the same great experience at RU. Unfortunately, I don't believe that's true. I do think we're getting better, but I think there's still work to be done. I feel like removing the flag to me suggests that we want to sweep uncomfortable truths back under the rug. We need to honor the bravery of our students who stood up to share their stories, who stood up to say no one deserves to be treated like they were, who stood up and said no more, not on my watch in my town. Um, it took a lot of bravery, effort, and courage, and work to fly that flag. And I think I think we need to honor that in some way. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Ross, or is this his daughter? It's me, Chloe, again. Um, and like Vicky was saying, kind of similar, um, since I've gone through a lot of hatred at this school and a lot of it was racially motivated, um, just seeing that the flag is still, like, was there was really important for me because it was still a symbol that the school supports me and that the flag is with me and that's it's like very nice and important to me to have that and the flag isn't only supporting students of color in our school it's also supporting people of color everywhere and that they still matter and they're still being, being killed every day and black lives will always matter so thank you So Emily, do you want to say another little bit? You've spoken um, already. Um, or I don't know if you just did, forgot to. No, I would like to agree with everything that has been stated so far by Vicky and other students that have let their voices be heard. I just, I remember going to that school every day and experiencing hate and just disgusting things every day, whether that be racially motivated or sexual orientation motivated, of just hatred coming from these people who haven't experienced life through the lens of a queer or not or non-white person. And the fact that this flag is being treated as an issue of politicizing a human rights issue is genuinely disgusting. And I think as a school, we should be striving for a environment that makes all students' voices heard and welcome and feel safe. And I agree, it's easy to not have these conversations and we, it's not my problem. I am i can't have this issue, I'm a white person, or that's just our privilege speaking and we need to come together and uplift student voices and have these difficult conversations because this is how work progresses and how change is created and having these conversations need to happen. And this is a very important issue that needs to be continued discussing. And I am here to stand with these students and these educators who are taking us the correct stand, the morally right stand with these students. Thank you. Yeah, give me a second to get my, my thoughts together a little bit. I think some of, um, you know, what I want to say, you know, is a reflection of, of something that Dana had mentioned last night, which I thought, thought was good, because it tied into some discussions that the cabinet members have had. Um, and 
it's this idea that um, you know schools schools reflect their communities and if we've got hate in our schools it's because we've got hate in our communities and every day um, what I see happening is I see students that are coming in the door on fire um, and a bunch of talented teachers um, trying their darndest to put that out but every day those students leave those doors and they go back out into the community into certain pockets and they're set on fire again and every day we have to put them out if we want to solve this problem in the schools and there is a real problem in the schools with 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 hatred um, this community is going to have to find its heart and that's pretty much all I've got to say at this point in time after being here five years and observing um, and being around Nothing to do with the flag, but just in general about tonight. Okay, do we have any other folks that would like to be heard? Pam, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know I spoke, but I forgot one important thing I had on my list. I forgot a lot, but I thought there was a second policy that was supposed to be read about student-led protocol to get flags on the flagpole out front. And um, I don't see it in here. And I was expecting um, another piece of this that um, upheld all of the student work that already happened. So I'm just, I guess you're not allowed to answer questions because it's comment only. But just know that um, for anybody who cares, I know that there was, I thought there was another position. And I will write to you and ask you about that and see if we could get it in a future board meeting so we could discuss that position also. Thank you. I would just like to say one thing. I think it's, I just want to say thank you to all the students who have come forward to this meeting tonight and brought your perspective and your arguments about one way or the other, as well as the community members. It's nice to see so many people here and involved. And like many people have said, that's how changes are made. So thank you. I'd just like to ask, might there be a forum in some fashion? I'm hearing about all this hate, and I, I'd like to know more about it as a community member. What does that look like? I'm happy to ask uh, or, or talk if, if that's all right. Um, we've, we've talked in the past. Um, I think one of the things that I've, I've suggested heavily um, is having a, a trained facilitator uh, come in and actually run some fishbowl exercises um, and one of the best ways that you can do that and they've got to be a very well trained facilitator can come in have people from the community you know up on stage as the panel and talk about the experience that they've had so that the rest of the community can hear and, and, and talk about it. Um, that's the only way I think that people are going to understand where we truly are at um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's possible. There's money there to do it. Um, we just have to follow through. I'm just going to add a quick PS. I mean, I've worked mm -hmm. in the schools of the area, not so much in the Randolph one, but I have not seen it. So I'm wanting, I'm seriously asking, what is it that's being labeled the hate that you're seeing? It's, uh, you know, the LGBTQ piece is huge. Those kids are, are being genuinely honest. I had, uh, I shouldn't say I had, but I was there when it had to happen and it and made the recommendation. We had to call the police on a parent who saw one of our transgender students standing out front at pickup time. Random student yelled and screamed obscenities out the window at him. Um, and so it's not just, like I said, it's, it's a community problem. Um, and it's not every member of the community, but it, it is a community problem and it spills over into the schools. And it's a, it's a big thing, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's hard enough trying to manage it within the district and, and within the schools. When we get outside of the school walls, it gets a little bit harder for a district or district leaders to be able to impact that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, could I just add very quickly in closing, I think as a policy governance board, one thing that this board could do that would move us further forward instead of backward would be to adopt BSB BSBA policy C29, which is an equity policy that would, as I mentioned, actually hold our schools accountable. Because I, he I hear the criticism that we can put whatever flag we want to on that poll and it doesn't mean anything. 
if that's not the experiences of the students in our building. So as a policy governance board, I would strongly urge, urge you to consider that. What is that policy number again? C29. C29. And I think it's curious that the BSBA has not recommended any policies around flagpoles. Okay, I believe that concludes our discussion and public comment. Um, we will move on to a second reading of the policy during uh, the next meeting. Um, and then, uh, Lane, the next thing is the well, we've got Scott is here. Okay. And we still oh, have our. Yay. Yeah. So, sorry about that, Scott. Um, so, why don't, yes, and, and Devin's held on. Um, so, why don't we move on to that and we'll, we'll get that uh, done. So, we're going to regroup and we're back to um, just introducing our two candidates. Uh, from the Brookfield community who are um, interested in serving on the board and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and we'll try and do this in a fairly timely manner since we're already at 8 o'clock um, so um, Scott if you want to come uh, into the room. What we're going to do is we're going to um, start and maybe, do folks want to, are some folks wanting to depart before we get started in this? So we'll give you a few minutes to get yourselves ready and then we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a two minute stretch break and then uh, folks can do what they need to do. Okay, we are ready to recommence with the, and I appreciate both Devin and Scott for being very flexible given uh, sort of what has been transpired this evening. Um, and again, what we'd like is for um, each one of you to um, just speak for a minute or two about your interest in being on the board. And then we're going to open it up for board members to ask some questions of you. We're going to uh, alternate between, we'll ask one of you first for one of the questions, and then the next question we'll ask the other candidate first. Um, we'll do that for about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up for you to ask us a few questions. And then we're going to move into executive session to deliberate and then we can let you know via email if you'd like or you can stay on and uh, come back uh, for you it would be come back into this room for the decision and Devin for you it would be coming back into the to the uh, regular board meeting uh, Google Google meet okay so to start um, uh, shall we start with you since you're here and ready um, can you tell us a little bit about your interest in being on the board? Sure. Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Scott Claude, and I'm the captain of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Um, yeah, what my interest is, you know, I saw a position here that, uh, and I've talked about it with a few, um, and what my, I wanted to, you know, try to have another avenue to get back to my community. Um, not in a law enforcement sense. And yes, I do apologize. I'm, I'm sitting here in uniform. Um, it's not what my, one of my goals was today, but today was just kind of a crazy, crazy, crazy day. Um, but you know, what, what can I do to give back to my community? Um, I have a lot of, uh, I've dealt with the school, the school's up uh, for many, many years. Uh, I've been a Orange County resident since uh, 2010. Um, where I came uh, right into the Randolph area as a patrol officer, and uh, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, from all the schools. And I like to have a more broader view on what's going on here. 
Um, I attended this meeting for the first 15 minutes uh, before I had to go and back to my training. And uh, it opened my eyes greatly. Uh, I'm missing a boat. And I don't like missing boats. I like to you know, have an understanding of what's going on in my community. So I was extremely shocked with um, the first 15 minutes of this meeting um, that I'm, I'm not paying attention. Um, so I need to kind of fix that. And one of the things that I was trying to do here was be a part of this board. Um, how can I help? Um, that's me professionally. Personally, I have uh, three small kids that are going to be navigating this uh, school system. I've got a kiddo going into sixth grade next year and uh, two uh, twins going into kindergarten. Um, so I've got a vested interest in regards to the school system. Um, trying to advocate the best I can for my kids and all kids. And that was my interest in, in uh, seeking out this position. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a switch now to yep. Devin, so we're gonna kind of be doing this back and forth. Um, and it looks like you you have the floor, Devin. Hi, how uh, thanks thanks for having me. Um, my name is Devin Cropley. I am a West Brookfield resident. Um, I've been a resident here for about a year and a half now. Um, prior to this, I uh, was a lifelong uh, resident of Connecticut and uh, the great state of Vermont brought me here, um, brought myself, my family here. And, uh, you know, when looking around, you're looking into different towns and I gotta say, uh, I fell in love with Brookfield. Um, it was the town where you could be the farthest apart, but still feel the closest together. Um, and part of that is I think the community that we have are very, very close knit, um, especially our little area that we have over here in West Brookfield. And, um, you know, like I put in my letter to you folks is that, you know, I, I'd like to have more involvement in the school system and to see the inner workings and, you know, bring positive change and bring insight where I can, you know, I can't, I can't speak too much on uh, as far as experience with the schools, but, you know, being a parent and seeing the struggles and adversities that other parents have, and I think, uh, I could I could bring something to the table, either you know a different point of view or just some different thoughts and different different opinions. Okay, thank you very much, Devin. So um, now we're going to open it up to um, board questions. Um, so I'm going to if folks have a particular question that they. Hopefully you saw my request for you to bring at least one question um, for the new candidates. Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, do you have an understanding of what policy governance is? And we'll start, we'll start with Devin, since we need Scott go first there. Um, prior, prior to, to this uh, proposal, I did not, um, I went over the readings which were provided as far as the policy governance and protocols with that, um, you know, and that's a pretty deep read, but obviously I still have a lot to learn about that. That's very normal. <laughs> it's not a thing that everyone fully understands, I think. Okay, and let's have Scott's response to that question. Sure, uh, pretty much in the same boat. Um, I'm dealing with, I deal with policies all the time in uh, the sheriff's office, um, and I know that this is a total different beast, um, which I don't have a lot of experience about, um, but uh, definitely want to try to dive in and try to have a more understanding of what's, what's in play. So I'm gonna ask a follow-up question to that, and and my question is, um, it is a fairly complex system of governance. Um, and as you, I sent both of you the uh, video from the VSBA, the Vermont School Boards Association. School, school boards in general are policy level um, uh, governance structures. Um, so there is a fair amount of learning that has to take place. And so um, I'm just curious, um, given that you're gonna have to spend some time 
learning about our system of governments, go governance. How do you see yourself learning this system? Like, how is that going to be for you, given your life and given that this is a volunteer board? Um, will that be something, how well will you be able to fit that into your schedule? And yeah, are we on? Yes, we're on you, Scott. Uh, like a lot of things, you know, my, my life is uh, pretty chaotic at best. Uh, you know, I, I joke about I live in two zoos, uh, my professional life and then also my home life. Um, but I always try uh, to make time as much as possible to um, deal with whether I got a more training, um, readings, um, watching videos. YouTube is a great thing all the way around. Um, but in regards to what I've got to catch up on, but I can strive for that pretty good. I think I have to agree with Scott also, you know, obviously having a family and, and a full-time career and such is, is tough, but you know, you obviously will make time for the things that you're passionate in. And, and if uh, getting on this board is something that will happen, that is a passion that I will pursue. Um, I will note that, you know, obviously family will come first every single time, you know, and uh, but I will make accommodations to uh, to educate myself on the policies and practices. I'll go. Um, when I wanted to be on this board, I was like, I've got kids in school; they're young. I want to be part of the the school community, and I've come to this table, um, and after being here for like a year or so, I've realized like. We are really um, decision makers of the overall policies, not the uh, issues that we see within the schools like I kind of thought I would be. Maybe, I guess I didn't have a good understanding in the beginning. And I've come to really enjoy this seat, but is that would that affect your decision of wanting to be on this board? Like, we don't actually have that much power, but we do. You know what I mean? Like, in regards to like the daily in school issues. Okay. And we're on Devon first. Mm -hmm. Stone, right? Yes. I don't think that, you know, being on the board is, is going to immediately affect immediate in school issues. You know, that's kind of the same idea of management. You know, there's people in place to, to fix school level issues. And I think it's up to the board to govern policy and, and and give them what they need to do at the school level, you know, and have a, and having a diverse board will, I think, you know, make a positive impact on that. So to be honest, when I first uh, kind of took a look at this, I had the very same stance, not gonna lie. Um, and the more people I talk to and things like that, that's, you know, I've come to have that kind of understanding that I don't have that influence on the day-to-day -day ops, um, you know, from the schools or all the above. And you know, what I I saw in the first 15 minutes here too, um, I I know that even more now. Um, so change gears on this guy, um, which is cool, and it's expected. Um, I whatever we can do to try to help push the school forward in regards to policies or whatever needs to be covered, I think that's the place that we need to strive for, especially with this kind of work. Sarah, has your hand up Sarah. too? Yeah. Oh, Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. Hello. Hi, hi. hi. <laughs> Based on what we just discussed, um, although, you know, as a board member, you aren't directly bringing your opinions to the table, you're more so um, voting on these policies. Um, I'd still like to ask the both candidates, what changes would you like to see in OSSD schools? Number starting with Devin. Devin. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, there's a lot of change that happened. I mean, just by listening to the conversations from the speakers tonight, I mean, it's hard to put one one topic at at the height of the issue. But you know, that, that would require some thought. But I mean, I think making sure everybody is uh, very inclusive in, in the schools is important. But you know. Is that, 
Is that your end? Did you end or yeah. did? Okay. There was some noise and I didn't know if there was like you got cut off. Okay. Uh, Scott. Uh, I, I agree with Devin, um, and, the, and I'm trying to take an easy way out. Um, the, my eyes have been opened quite a bit, and like I stated earlier, I feel like I'm missing the boat. Um, to pick a topic or topics uh, at the first front of you know, what can we change, I don't have an answer for that just yet. I, 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 I feel like I would have to kind of dive into it a little bit more and have a better understanding uh, as to make that kind of an opinion as of just right yet. Any other board members have any questions? Okay, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, do you have questions of us as uh, board members? What <clears throat> anything in regard to the uh, being on the board, Devin? Any any questions? Um, no, I mean, there's there's lots of questions. You know, there's a lot more detailed things, I guess, that I need to read into and look into, um, but nothing in specific. Okay. All right, and. Um, I think at this point we will move into executive session to deliberate and um, we will let you know via email. Would that be okay? Um, and same with you, Devin? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna. So we need to have I move a to motion. enter executive session to discuss. Um, I'm no. going to recuse myself. It wouldn't be appropriate for yeah. me to be. Okay. So, but I got to switch things over to the executive okay. session for Sarah. So, so all those in favor say aye. 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 So, Chelsea, okay. you'll take the notes. <laughs> okay. So we're back in regular session. So I'm looking for a motion for the appointment of the Brookfield Board. First member. So I move to appoint Scott Kluwa as the Brookfield representative for the OSSD board. I'll uh, second. We have a second from Megan. Any discussion, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Welcome, Welcome aboard. aboard. Yes. Yes. You got to get sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sworn in. And yeah. Linda's got, Linda will connect with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, got a you can stay for the rest of the meeting. I just, I just can't do anything. Can't, can't do anything. <laughs> can't vote or. Can't vote. Right. You can't chat. I suppose what? Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so next up on the agenda, I believe we're back on track. So we have the um, consent agenda. What is the first reading of PL 2.6 yeah. adjusted policy change? Oh, oh, and, oh and right. Can we, we do the governance done. review and update date for policy governance review? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, yeah we, that was June 1st. Okay. Looks like we're all, this is about. Although we've got Scott now, hopefully that's going to work for him as well. Do we have extra agenda packets? No, they're all for him. Uh, oh, you can do some yeah. Well, I can talk a little bit about this. So, um, executive limitation 2.6 um, was the asset protection that was approved at last uh, board meeting. And I pointed out during the two readings of, about provision five. And so, how it currently reads is, um, you know, make any purchase where a normally prudent protection has not been given against conflict of interest of over $15,000 without having obtained comparative prices. So in other words, when the board originally created this, um, probably I think it was 2016-ish um, or so, what they did was they took the language of the law, you know, at, at what point, at what dollar amount, what threshold do we have to go out to bid when, when we're doing purchases on behalf of the district, and it was $15,000 at that time. This last year, it has changed to forty thousand dollars, and so the the recommendation is um, that you know since the original intent of the policy was to to have it state exactly what the law was, um, was to just update it now that that law has changed, and so that's the you know the proposal change is just the dollar amount. 
So anything that we're purchasing or buying that's over $40,000, we have to go out and get at least three competitive bids for. Is it important to have in this policy a number or no, have this is just reflect the, that reflect that we're trying to follow state law? Like, do we have to put $40,000 in there? Should we just put? Because what happens when the law changes? Again. Right. So you could change the language to, to, to match the law. Um, one of the, so, but there's a complication here and see if I can explain this. So there is monies that we spend from the state level, like from the Ed Fund, right? That's what, 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 what funds our budget. There's also money that we get in that comes in from federal grants. The threshold to go have to go out to bid by law at the state level is 40,000. The threshold for federal monies is 50,000. And in talking with Robin, it just made more sense and, and less confusing to go with a lower threshold for both. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the only quirk that's in there. Um, and this is looked at every year. So next year, if it changes to I'll, I'll, I'll inform you. Right. And we'll have to do this again. And again, you also have the right to say, hey, yeah, you know, we don't, we don't, we think 40,000 is too much. Um, you know, we want to stick with the 15,000 or you want another dollar amount that's in there. Um, Robin and I talked for a little, a little while. Typically, um, if it's a bid for something that's over 15,000, it's typically over 40 anyway, too, if that, if, if what I'm saying is making sense. Yeah. There's not a lot that falls between 15 and 40,000. No. Yeah. As soon as you hit, as soon as you hit that 15, 15 mark, you're over the 15 mark. Mm. Okay. Sorry, I apologize if I got my back to you. Okay, so um, is there any? Are there any other questions about this um, change? And it's really just that dollar amount that we're changing in that policy. Um, so is this a first reading of this? Yeah, possibly. Change. Yeah, yeah, we can do first reading of it. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so we'll do a first reading and then um, we'll follow up the next meeting and do a second reading to adopt it. So again, if you happen to think of things afterward, um, we can always look at that again. Mm -hmm. And remember with, with policy governance, we, we don't wanna to get too, too specific in the, in the right. policy, because um, then it just, it's really hemming him in. Um, and these, these are our, our guidelines, but when you, when you think about it, um, you know, we want him to follow, follow what, the, what the law is saying given the amount. Okay, so that will appear on the agenda for the next meeting. So this was a first reading. Okay, so next, and please stop me if I've missed something. Um, we're moving on to the consent agenda. Um, so again, here, these are things that um, are just they're operational in nature, and we're just, uh, because we have to um, approve them um, for legal reasons, we're, we're approving them. Um, so if anyone, we have to uh, have someone move to pull something out if you wanna What's the, have um, a discussion about it. I have a I have a question. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. What's the leave of absence request? I don't think feel like I saw that in my uh, guidance counselor uh, from RTCC would like a year leave of absence. Um, we're not going into a lot of kind of personal details, but just mm -hmm. um, end of COVID, mm -hmm. people are exhausted. They're trying to recoup from their intentions to return at the end of the year. Do we have a? We'll have a hire then. So I will hire a long term replacement. Yeah. It's an unpaid. Unpaid leave. We only do one. Remember, we only do oh, yes. one no, paid, one. paid one leave. Once sabbatical each year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I move to approve the consent, consent agenda. Do we have a second? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, superintendent's report. I think we heard a fair amount of it. Yeah, unless there's um, questions on, on the parts and pieces. Okay. 
And again, remember these are there for our understanding of um, sort of what's going on in the schools. It's our view into the schools um, a little bit, um, just so we know what's, what's going on. Uh, and then are there any questions about any of those reports? Nope. And uh, can I just say something? I've been sure. putting, as the newsletters come to me, I've been forwarding them out to you because yeah, they're on this, excellent. you know, different format. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. I print them out, it's not yeah. Like it's no. like sometimes they have a video so you can see it. So if that doesn't work, let me know. But that's what I figured that's a lot the better. Works great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, great. it's it's actually really nice. Okay, yeah. good. I, good. I like. Yeah, good. Um, seeing all of that. Uh, okay, so Katya, update, update, the update on, on the uh, teacher appreciation. All right, so uh, the information that I have is um, I do have, if we're going with the with the gift certificates that we have in past years, um, Chef's Market is a yes. Um, I have a call into Korea's and also Village Pizza because we lost one when Huggable Mug closed. Mm -hmm. um, I have a call into wit and grit as well to see if they would be interested in this um guest certificate program uh, i'm waiting back and calls from all three um so other than that i have chefs ready to go i'm just waiting for those other two to say yes once i have that done i can make up the um certificates and get them to linda and we can get our places paid for and get that done when does that have to be done by When's, When's the that? teacher appreciation it's week? Some in time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So that's where we're at. If okay. anyone has questions, thank you for doing it. that. Or um, anything different? How time consuming has that been for you? It has not been very time consuming when I remember to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> remember. Was it May? <laughs> so May first to May. That's the week of May first. Okay, week of May first. Okay. So apologies, everyone. <laughs> So will you have four or three? Uh, I may have four. Okay. Great. Yeah. If, if all four come back to me and say they'd like to be part of it, then the more the merrier. Yep. And more options for our staff to be appreciated. Yep. Okay. So we're on uh, a recap for the meeting. Whew. And so we are going to just have a confirmation, hopefully, um, from Jackie on she said June 1st would work, so we'll get information out. And Scott, this is um, some training in policy governance. So we're doing sort of some some board work and how, how and we're operating. first one's operating. Gonna be June 1st, we think. Yes. Which is a Wednesday night. Yeah, so hopefully that will work okay. Um, we did a poll and that's what seems to be coming through for everybody. Um, we are going to have the second reading in the flag policy. We are going to uh, have the second reading in the EL 2.6 policy. So that will mean we'll be voting on those. And um, if any of you have things that you wanna put on the agenda, don't forget that you can contact me and let me know, and we can add those to the agenda. Uh, and that's that's what we have coming from this meeting. And then, of course, I'll be looking at the annual uh, calendar just to see where we're at um, in terms of other things that are coming along. I didn't. I actually have that with me, but I didn't look at it to be able to let us. Meeting evaluation. I was honest. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so basically we got all ones except for I gave us a five because the meeting was well attended. Um, oh, I forgot to do this. Uh, we were all prepared for the meeting, so that will be a five too. Um, I gave us all a five for listening attentively as part as participants spoke, but I also kind of did like as everyone is speaking. Um, there's a couple of twos and some random threes in here. Um, I did do, let's see, for um, board chair helps the board get its job done rather than supervising or becoming involved. I gave a four. Um, 
And then I also did a four for uh, spending most of its time, board spends most of its time debating, defining, clarifying. And then I made a side note um, that um, this was, uh, this meeting had an extensive public comment and you did an excellent job with time control. Thanks Patrick for helping. Um, Thank you, <laughs> and then yeah. overall control of public comment and clarifications of, of policies and just complaint procedure, et cetera, which I'm sure we will be hearing a lot via email yeah. because of that. So uh, kind of a crappy meeting, but overall like the board specific things, I think we did good. Any other comments? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on from there. Uh, we're going to uh, adjourn this meeting and go into one more executive session for um, the labor agreement. I move to enter executive session for a labor agreement, possible MOU discussion. So Sarah, we're going to move back over to executive session. So for executive session. Okay. okay. Yes, we are. We're back into the regular meeting. And um, so do we have a motion for uh, accepting the support staff MOU? Yes, I make a motion to accept the OSWBA support staff MOU, the draft uh, from 3.30.22. As we have a second? A second. Seconded by Katya. Uh, any discussion before we take a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, and do we have a motion to open negotiations for an MOU with the professional staff. Not seeing a motion. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion so to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Adjourning at 9.30. Yeah.